Hello everybody and welcome to our third live event of SC0X. So today is with me Akash Regengar, who is a TA for SC0X. Welcome Akash. Hi everyone, uh, great to be here. Welcome everyone to the third live event. Okay, awesome. So this is the plan for, for today. And for that, let me show you, uh, let me share you my, my screen. So basically what we'd like to cover today is, is the following. So we're gonna, gonna be uh, starting just talking about uh, as a reminder of the contents that we that you uh, must see in order to uh, take the exam. So we have some um, uh, material about the contents and the pace. Then um, we will offer some uh, options that you have to uh, get ready for the final exam. So what are the different alternatives that you might take in order to be ready for the for the final exam? And finally, we're gonna be discussing about uh, one of these exam preparation sections, which is gonna be about optimization. So that's gonna be the main part of this live event. So if you have any questions, please feel free to, uh, to ask us. So we'll, we'll use the question sections that Zoom has in order to gather all the, all the questions that you may have about optimization and about the, the course itself. Okay, uh, without further ado, let me and just uh, as a reminder that uh, this course, SC0X, uh, is structured in five different modules. So module one, it's about an overview of supply, supply chain management, and also about data management. Module two, it's about uh, probability. Module, two, module three, it's about statistics. And today we're gonna be talking about module four, which is uh, optimization. And lastly, module five, which is about uh, algorithm approximation and sim simulations. So these are the modules that are gonna be assessed, that are gonna be evaluated during our final uh, final exam. So it's gonna be a comprehensive, a comprehensive fi final exam. So there are uh, four weeks left uh, to our final, final exam. So it's, it's, it's now time for you to get ready for the final exam. It's only five, weeks until we release the final exam. So I'm hoping that you are uh, spending a lot of time getting ready for this final exam. So there are many uh, options for you uh, to, to, uh, to prepare this final exam. So the first one is please make sure that you are uh, taking the module, the module test. So we have one module test for each of the five modules. And there's a deadline for this uh, module test, which is gonna be December 11th. So the module tests are worth 10% of the final grade. So it's not, there are not a, a lot, but please make sure that you uh, prepare this module, module test. Then we also have what we call the exam prep, prep sections, prep section. And within this, this section, we have three problems. So the last one, which is gonna be the topic of today was released last week. But additional to this, uh, to this problem, we have also problem, one problem about probability and one problem about, um, about um, statistics, okay? So this, so today we will focus on the third problem of these exam prep sections. Additionally, for those that are, are verified, so we're gonna be uh, offering a, a practice exam that's gonna be open on November 20, and it's gonna be remain open until we open the exam, until December 11. And this is gonna be a replica of the final exam. So you will have four problems. You, it's gonna be a time exam. You will have four hours to complete this, this test. So the idea is to simulate all the conditions that you will experience during the live exam. So please don't, uh, don't miss this opportunity to also take this uh, practice exam, okay? So, uh, and again, the practice exam will open on November 20th, and we will close this practice exam the day we release the final exam, which is gonna be December 11th. Oh, uh, please, um, if you have friends that are in the course and are not verified yet, please remember them that verification will close on uh, December, uh, November 20th. And that's the last chance for them to become verified, verified learners. Okay, so um, as, as I was saying, the main focus of today is gonna be problem three of the exam prep. And this is uh, about optimizations, about our module number number four. And for, for this particular uh, problem we have, as usual, we have three sections. The first one is the problem statement where you can find all the, all the, the details of the problem and also you can find the questions of, of the problem. So that's in the section that is called, or in the tab that is called for you to solve. Then we have a, a different section that is called a step-by-step -step solution. 
And in this case, we have a video and which Ima Borella, our previous uh, course lead, will, will teach you or will show you step by step how uh, she approached this, this problem and will answer the different questions associated with, with this problem. And finally, we have uh, the, the Q&A live, live event. So I, ideally, you, if you have a previous question, you have you had the options to put your questions there. I'm going to be answer some of those questions in this live event today. So you have already this material, okay? If something is not clear, you have the step-by-step -step solution where you can see a, how a EMA approach this, this problem. Okay, so let's talk about the, the particular problem that we are trying to solve in this live event, which is this problem number three. And this uh, problem number three, it's about uh, this company that is called Fork Motor Company, which is a automobile manufacturer that operates in the, in the US. And this company has uh, three different regional distribution centers, the RDCs, which are located in California, Florida, and Texas. And there's a demand in, in numbers of uh, millions of automobiles that need to be satisfied to these uh, distribution centers. Additionally, uh, the company has two different plants that are located in Michigan and Nevada. And the automobiles are shipped from these plants uh, with a final destination uh, as the regional distribution centers. So there is inf information, what you can see in, this, in, in the table is information about the distance between the different plants to the uh, regional distribution centers. And that, those distances are measured in miles. Additionally, there's a capacity that should be, um, should be met. So there is a maximum capacity at each of the plants. And that's again um, expressed in millions of, of, of cars. And finally, we have a transportation cost, which is uh, $4.86 per mile per automobile. So that's all the information that was shared with us. The first question is about what's the minimum cost of shipping a of shipping the, the cars uh, and expressing millions of dollars. So how can we approach this, this problem? The first thing, so which is what I do is, I, I will try to write the problem in the model in, in a piece of paper. I'm gonna be showing some of my reasoning and then I'm gonna be showing you uh, how I will approach this problem in, in Excel. So in, for, for the paper version, I need to define just the indexes. So remember that we are shipping cars from plants to the regional distribution center. So we have two different sets. One set is gonna be for, is gonna be the I, so that's gonna be the plants. And for this particular problem setting, we have only two plants, Michigan and Nevada. So the I represent the plants. The second index will represent what gonna be my demand nodes, what, which are the RDCs. And for this particular problem, we have three different RDCs located in California, Florida, and Texas. So J will take these, these, uh, these uh, three values. So those are the, those are the indexes. So what's the then what's the data that we know? What's the information that is given to solve the problem? We have the C, which is gonna be the unit transportation cost, and that is measured in dollars per mile per vehicle. So that's gonna be, we're gonna be charging uh, this amount to each vehicle in, for each mile that is that is uh, being traveled. Then we have the distance, so that's gonna be the DIJ. So the distance will depend on I and J. So that meaning that will will gonna be a function on where the, the, the car is, is shipping and what's gonna be the final destination. And that's the distance measured in miles, again, from plan I to regional distribution center J. Then we have two additional pieces, pieces of information, which is the capacity. And we have a capacity at each of the of the plants. So that's why this S depends on the index I because it's, it's a value that is associated to each of the plants. So different for each of the plants. And finally, we have the demand that should be met. And this demand is uh, or depends on the RDC. So we'll have one demand that is specific for each of the RDCs. So that's why the D depends on G, D, DJ. Uh, the capacity and also the demand are measured in uh, millions of vehicle, vehicles. So, okay, so any mathematical model will have, oh, has um, three main parts. The first one is the decision variables. And in this case, what we're trying to decide is the number of vehicles that are gonna be shipped from plant I to 
three RDC J. So basically, how many vehicles will be sending from the plant to RDC? And that's going to be our X I J. Again, X I A X will depend on the plant, on the origin, and will depend on the destination. So we may have different numbers depending on the plant and depending on the RDC. So for this particular uh, problem, for this particular question, since we, since we have uh, three, uh, two plants and three uh, RDCs, so we will have two times three, so six different, um, different decision variables. The, the second part of any mathematical model is the objective function. So now, uh, so here for this particular problem, what we're trying to do is minimize total cost. And total cost is gonna be just the product of the decision variables times the distance times the unit cost. So basically, we're gonna be multiplying that, the numbers that are gonna be shipping from plan I to uh, RDCJ by the distance between the plan and the RDC. And that's gonna be again multiplied by the unit transportation cost. And the main objective, main objective of the mathematical model will be to minimize this total cost. Basically, that's our uh, total transportation cost. And the, the, the third piece, the last piece of any mathematical model is the constraints. For this particular problem setting, we will have three different types of, types of constraints. The first one is we have some capacity limits. We have some capacity constraints. And basically each of the two plants, each of them uh, has a, a capacity constraint. So basically the first constraint, the capacity constraint is saying that that the production in each of, in each of the plant uh, should not exist, exceed the capacity of the of the of the plant. So that's why the sum of x i j uh, over over i. So this means all the production, all, all the all the vehicles that we are shipping from pl plant i, it should be less than the capacity of that plant. And we will have one of these constraints for each of the plants. Since we have two plants, we will have two different capacity constraints. Uh, here, one for Michigan and other for, for Nevada. The second uh, set of constraints are demand constraints. So now uh, we need to satisfy, we need to meet the, de the demand. So basically all the vehicles that are gonna be sending from the different plants to a particular RDC should be equal to the, the demand. So that's what this second constraint is, is saying. And we will have one of these constraints for each of the RDC, since we have three different RDCs, California, Florida, and Texas, we will have three different uh, cons demand constraints. And finally, the non-negativity constraints, we, will, we have to make sure that the number of vehicles shipped should be uh, greater or equal to, to zero. We cannot ship a, any, a negative, uh, any negative value of vehicles. So that will be all the mathematical model in a piece of paper. Let me, see, let me, let me show you now how I, I reflected this on an Excel. And uh, again, I'm gonna be starting with following like the, the four, four steps. First, let's see what the data that, that we have. And all the data that we have is colored in, in gray. So first we have the C, which is the unit transportation cost, measured in dollars per mile, per mile per vehicle. Then we have all the distances from plants to RDCs. Uh, since we have two plants and we have three RDCs, we have six different distances, and these uh, distances are measured in, in miles. Then we have the capacity, one capacity a value for each of, of the plants, and these plant capacity are measured in, in millions of vehicles. And finally, the demand that should be met. Again, measuring number of for millions of vehicles. That's, that's all the information that, the, that was given as part of this, this problem. Then uh, let's talk about now, now about the decision variables. And again, how have a, a table where I'm putting the decision variables which are colored in, uh, in yellow. So basically I need to decide how many units are gonna be shipped from Michigan to California, from Michigan to Florida, and from Michigan to Texas. And the same thing for Nevada. So that's why I, I will have six different values for my decision variables. Uh, then uh, the objective function, the objective function now I have color in, in, in green. And this is gonna be just my total transportation cost. So basically I'm gonna be multiplying this unit transportation cost. So this 4.86 times 2000, which is the distance from Michigan to California, 
by the number of units are gonna be shipping from Michigan to California. You don't have to multiply by one by, by one by one. If you're using Excel, there's a function that is called sum product that will simplify this calculation. And finally, uh, the constraints. As mentioned before, we have three different sets of constraints. Capacity constraint. So basically, all the product, all the units that were shipped from Mexico, Michigan, which is going to be this sum. So this zero, this zero represents the, the, the sum of these three cells. And this is going to be less than 2.5. Same thing for Nevada. Uh, similarly, we'll have a, capa a demand constraint. So now this zero will represent the, the sum of all the vehicles that we are shipping from Michigan to ne Nevada with California as the destination. And this quantity of units shipped to California should be equal to the, to the demand, which in this case is 1.5 million. And finally, non-negative constraints. We have to make sure that all values that are color, other cells that are color in yellow should be uh, greater or equal to, to zero. See, this is how I set up my, my Excel. And finally, just using software with the specific uh, constraints. You can take a look that my uh, uh, objective cell is the, in this case, is the two, which is color in, in gray. Uh, my changing variables for my decision variables are all those cells that are color in yellow. And finally, the constraints are those that I just showed. You can see that in the, sub, in the constraints box, we have only two sets, only the capacity and demand, because here I make sure that all uh, variables are non-negatives. Okay, so do I, I, don't, I don't have to, again, uh, add the non-negativity constraint. Okay, so that's uh, what I have uh, to share with you. So let me stop here and start asking, uh, answering any questions that you uh, might have. Okay. Great. Um, so one of the questions is regarding the practice exam, whether the students will be able to see the answers, they're correct or not, after answering the last question or what the procedure is for seeing their performance on the practice exam. Okay, that's a, a very good question. Yes, so uh, after, after they are done with the exam, after they uh, tried the the practice exam, so you will have you will be able to see if you get it wrong or, or right or wrong. But also we will uh, we will uh, share with you what was the right solution. So you will have the, the the solution of that that problem. Okay, so solution will be shared uh, for the practice problem. Perfect. And also just just to point out for the final exam though. Uh, you will not receive any feedback or you won't be able to see whether the answer is correct or wrong. So you'll only be able to see your grade after the final exam uh, has been analyzed by the staff. Correct. That's correct. So this is just for the, for the practice, but the final exam is going to be different. Okay. Um, I know I also had some uh, questions on the email and forums about sure. the final exam rescheduling. Uh, so let me say that this will, won't be possible since we have a global course. Uh, it's very hard to uh, change deadlines for individual accommodations. Uh, so please try to do uh, or finish the exam before the deadline, between yes. the that like between the two uh, the week uh, of the final exam. Yes, keep in mind that the that exam is going to be open for one week, from December 11 to December 18. But once you start the exam, once you click on the start the exam, you have only four hours to complete the, the exam. Okay, please plan accordingly. All right. Uh, there's another question regarding the exam again, uh, referring to module four. Uh, will the optimization part of the exam only be of uh, LP type or other types of optimization pr problems also? It could be could be a different different type of optimization problem. So basically, everything that is part of the content of the concept con of, of the course uh, could be assessed in the final exam. So we can have, for example, MIL MILPs as well in the final exam. Great. Um, and there are also questions, uh, a lot of questions about whether it's still possible to enroll in the course or verify in the course. And will, is there enough time left to finish? Uh, I think that verification deadline is a week from today or Correct. sometimes one week, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you're diligent enough to uh, put the hours in before the final exam week and finish all the module tests and all the assignments on time, I don't see why you won't be able to complete the course. Correct. Uh, I know it'll be a little challenging, but uh, if you really want to finish, I think it's definitely possible. Yeah, so keep in mind also that I, I, I just uh, showed you with you the more or less an estimation of the time that you will need to, to watch all the videos and do the practice problems. Keep that also, also in mind. 
if you have enough time to dedicate or at least to, to roughly to, uh, corresponding to, to the time estimations, uh, please do it. But if you feel that that's gonna be too much, so maybe it's, it's, it's time for you to, to take the next, 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 exam, next exam, so next SC0X. Right. Okay, more, more questions? No? Um, no. Um, actually, yeah, there's a question about uh, SAS, whether it's mandatory to know SAS uh, for the exam or if it has any advantages to know for the exam or is Excel good enough for the December exam? Okay, so Excel should be enough for you. So actually the, the exam will, will can be designed to be solved in Excel. However, you are, you, are, you are free to use any software that you want. So you can use SAS, you can use Ample, or any other software that you are familiar with. So it's gonna be, again, designed for Excel, but you can use the software that you, that you want. Great, yeah, so just referring again to the final exam, again, it's an open book exam. So feel free to use the resources available in the course, as well as any uh, software uh, that you may like. Uh, so the only cons uh, constraint is you can use outside help from other people, but feel free to use uh, any of the course material, uh, the modules, the videos, or anything like that. Correct. Yes. So that's a good good point. So it's an open exam. You can use any material that you have. You can rewatch a part of the video if, or even this live event during the exam. So that's that's allowed. But it's not allowed with collaboration between uh, partners. Yep. And also there was a few questions um, frequently about the blended master's program and just the, uh, the structure of things uh, of doing the blended masters after the micro masters program. Uh, we'd refer you to the uh, micro ma uh, the blended masters email address. It's scmb at mit.edu. Again, that's scmb at mit.edu. I'll also post it in the chat window uh, so you guys have access uh, to this resource to ask any questions about the blended masters program. Yes, yes. So we had a, li a live event for ac 0 x last week and we received a, a lot of questions about the blended. But that's a way to go, the, the email of uh, the blended program. Uh, anything else, uh, Akash, any additional mm, questions? No. Live questions, we don't, we don't have it, right? No. Okay, so uh, if you have any, any additional question, please use the discussion forum. Remember that we have a discussion forum section for this live event. If you have any pending, any outstanding questions, please post it uh, there. We're gonna be make sure that the what we share today is also available for you, and that's going to be available again in the in the sections that you use, use for this live event. So you can watch this video after we uh, after we uh, we are done. And with that, uh, so there's again only four weeks to uh, to the final exam. So please make sure that you are dedicating enough enough hours to uh, get uh, well prepared for the final exam and uh, do the, 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 the exam prep, also the module tests, but also don't miss the opportunity to take the, the practice exam. That's gonna be a, a good um, thermometer for you to see uh, where, where are you. Okay, and with that, uh, I will uh, say the yeah. word for you. Akash, any, any final remarks for me? Yeah, just uh, along the similar lines, I mean, uh, the final exam is less than a month away uh, now, so, uh, if you've been procrastinating, I guess now is the time to start uh, getting all the assignments together and uh, getting uh, prepared for the final exam. Uh, yeah, I wish you guys all the best. Uh, and yeah, excited to work with you all further. Okay. Thank you for joining this live event, guys. And very uh, well luck in the, in, in the final exam. See you next time. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.